Okay. Thank you. All right. Now, I was originally going to start this presentation with what do x, y, and z have in common. But this presentation is about physics. And in physics, everything has something in common with everything else, from matter makeup to fields to the number of dimensions that anything could reside in. So that intro just wouldn't work. So instead, hey, my name's Jeffrey Noseworthy, though I prefer to use the name Gaia. And I'm here to tell you exactly how important physics is. Now, as some of you know, and some of you are about to know, I'm aspiring to become a theoretical physicist. I want to work on ideas that popular media throws around as scientific buzzwords, such as string theory. But ever since I made the decision to become a theoretical physicist, I've been asked the same question time and time again. What can physics do today? Sadly, physics has lost its role of being the difficult but accessible science that used to describe the world around it, it has become this disconnected enigma to the eyes of the public and even many other fields of science. So I think it's time to change that. Yeah. We all know how physics described the world of the past. Newton discovered the formulas for motion and gravity, which allowed the entirety of our modern world to move. Orsted and Faraday discovered the formulas or the connections between electric current and magnetic fields, which creates all modern electronics and applications we use today. And Marie Curie and her team discovered radioactivity, which created the world's most efficient forms of energy production and planetary destruction that we've ever seen. Now, this is only a slice of the pie, but as we can see, physicists have always held really important jobs. But then we get to today. Ignoring astrophysics, as everyone has an idea of how important that is, physics is no longer seen as something really important today. So let's change that. Now, when people start telling me that physics is no longer important, they're always referencing one of three things. The first being that physics does nothing of value, period. The second being that physics is nothing of value that can be used today. And the third being that physics is nothing of value in my life personally. Now, seeing as these are three pretty wildly different ideas, we need to tackle each one individually. The first one being, physics is nothing of value. Now, this is the easiest one to disprove. The entire purpose of studying physics is to understand and manipulate the world around us. And a good example of this is that even more than 10 years ago, physicists learned that by manipulating the possible multidimensional space we live in, we could bend space in a proper way to travel billions and billions of light years in under a human year or even less time. Right? This goes along with another idea that physicists have made just as long ago, the Dyson sphere. The Dyson sphere is a sphere that we could wrap around a sun very, that will function very similar to our current solar panels. Right? This Dyson sphere would be able to absorb the energy and power multiple civilizations spanning multiple galaxies if we wish. Right? And st most designs would still allow us to bring light to Earth. Right? But even if physicists can theorize technology of the future, that doesn't change the fact we need technology today. So to help here, we're going to start by discussing superconductors. Now, one of the biggest problems with modern wiring is the fact that as electricity travels through wires, we're going to be losing quite a lot of it due to natural factors. Right? The more wiring you have, the more electricity is lost. But discoveries by physicists more recent and quite a while ago have found that by cooling wiring down to around zero, um, absolute zero, depending on your material, you could, you could put through up to infinite amounts of electricity at a reasonable pace without losing almost any of it at all. And it's this idea that allows us to create one of my personal favorites, the quantum computer. Now, we've all heard the wonders of, the, of this myth in technology, but what can these things actually do? In theory, quantum computers are going to use possible quantum states, we could call them, in particles that allow them to um, calculate every single possible combinations of zeros and ones at the exact same time. This would astronomically incre increase computing power, and maybe, if, maybe depending on how we do it, could allow for the first truly sentient AI. But whether or not that's a good thing, though, that's up to you. Right? Though now we know what physicists do today, that doesn't change the fact that we haven't answered the, mo the most important question that we could ask, and the one that I'm asked time and time again. What can physics do in my life personally? Well, ignoring the idea of lower electricity bills and drastically better computers, there is my personal favorite aspect of science, CRISPR. CRISPR, or Clustered Regular Interspace Short Palindromic Repeats, or Genetic Modification, as a much easier name, is, an, is the newest technology by biophysicists that could fix virtually all your problems. Through genetic modification through CRISPR, we'd be able to remove any and all genes that, cause, um, that could cause disorders in your body, such as Alzheimer's or many cardiovascular problems, which are the leading cause of death in the modern world. Right? We'd also be able to drastically improve your mind no matter what your age is. We could improve your body no matter what your age is. And 
Well, <laughs> we'd be able to do whatever we need to with humans. Right? And this works alongside another invention of ours, nanotech. Nanotech is currently be being developed by scientists across the world to be injected into one's bloodstream or into their body, which could produce re and release medicine at a proper rate, exactly when you need it, with zero hassle, zero pain, and without you noticing it. It would be able to stimulate virtually another organ in your body, and we wouldn't even need to go through complicated surgical procedures to do it. Right? And both of these technologies are relatively easy to access. Nanotech is already used today in the medicine field. And for CRISPR, well, if you have about $500 spare, you'd be able to buy the genes and tools required to actually modify your own genes with CRISPR. And you'd be able to even see a few choice benefits, though not too much unless you really wanted to. Right? So that's why physics is important today. Is physics disconnected from the rest of the world? <laughs> yes, it really is. And it does a terrible job of trying to reconnect itself. But that doesn't mean that physicists are going and screaming about multiple dimensions all day and doing nothing of importance. If you ask me, practicing physics with any degree or any program is one of the most important things you could do. And so that's how I plan on changing the world with physics. The question is, will you? Thank you. <laughs>